Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Adam here. On today's adventure, this is going to be a weird one. We're kind of sort of going there, back to Japan. I know we we just did a whole bunch of videos on Japan. We're only kind of going to Japan. We're kind of going there. Um, so I'm in Chicago, here at home. What we're actually doing is we're taking a flight out to Japan, basically to change planes, and we'll be heading down to Saipan and Guam, which I did videos on last year. We're going to do some updated stuff. It sounds like there's a whole bunch of new adventures we're going to have in Saipan. Well, all of the CNMI, there's a little bit of a hint. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a weird route. So here's the thing. My direct flight this morning from Chicago to Haneda, Tokyo, uh, was canceled. So I've been rerouted. I'm actually now going down to Houston, Texas first. Then I'm spending a night in Houston, which kind of sucks, but which is New Year's Eve at the time of recording this, so I'm going to be doing this in a hotel room. But then the next day, I'm going to take a flight from Houston, Texas to Narita, the other airport, which means I can show you guys that. And here's the coolest thing. In the you know preparation to come out here to O'Hare, I was talking to a guy, a buddy of mine named Joel, who is a super fan of this channel. Shout out to you, dude. This dude makes me look like a punk. Like, I have no idea how to fly. I've never been on a plane. Like, I'm by comparison. Like, I'm, it's almost like I've never flown before when I talked to this guy. Anyway, he could magically do a thing where he upgraded me to first class from Houston to Tokyo. Yeah. We're all checked in. We gotta go hit up the clear lane, of course. You guys know how this goes. Look, it's time machine for you guys. We still have Christmas stuff up, but you're probably watching this video in like late February. Okay, through security, no problems whatsoever. An interesting observation. It's kind of hard to believe I've never run into this problem, but I actually checked a bag this time. Um, and so I'm actually doing an overnight in Houston, uh, which is annoying, but whatever. It would have happened in Tokyo regardless, so it doesn't really matter for my ultimate plans. The reason I'm bringing this up is I just discovered, despite how much I fly, I mean, this is the kind of thing Joel would have told me if, you know, he knew I was in this situation, because he would have known. Uh, when you check a bag, even you can't connect it through when it has an overnight layover. So, like, my bag, I'm going to have to pick it up in Houston and then recheck it in tomorrow, which is mildly annoying, but worth knowing. Anyway, we're going to go try and do something, something special. So, obviously, you guys are very used to me going to the United Club Lounge. Well, there is actually a second lounge type of environment I've never been into. This is called the United Polaris Club. Now, in order to get into these, you basically have to be a Premier 1K, you have to be flying first class, you have to be flying international. These are all things that I don't really satisfy. But my buddy Joel, the guy who upgraded me, does. And apparently, we're going to test this, apparently, now that that's the case, I'm allowed to go in there. Let's find out. All right, and we are now in the Polaris Lounge. I have never been in one of these ever. This is like where, like, <laughs> where they spray poor people with bear mace. Like, every, every seat is like customized, like on the flights. Obviously, the food is supposed to be better. Uh, yeah, I know I'm looking like a noob, but I will probably never get to go into another one of these ever again just because they're so much better. Dining room over there. I've literally never been here. They got showers, they got restrooms, obviously. Departure gates, customer service, dining. Yeah, let's go get some food. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the view. This is Chicago Hairs Polaris Lounge. I think only the United Hubs have these uh, and only the bigger ones. So like, I don't think Guam has one, but it does have, uh, like Guam has a club, but I don't think it actually has like the Polaris Lounge. Let's see here. So this one's different because they don't just have like well, a buffet type of thing. They actually give you a menu and I can't open it with one hand, but inside it has different options. So we're at the lunchtime section. So they have, you can order any of this stuff and it's all totally free. I went with the chicken schnitzel because I thought, why not? And it's funny, as soon as I ordered it, she was like, is that it? It's like, for now, I guess. So, you know, we can get more stuff potentially later, but possibly the burger, but I'm not going to be here that long. We'll do this again in Houston. I should note that it also has a drink menu for, you know, alcohol stuff, spirits, wines, whatever. I just don't partake, but it does exist. And again, I have to stress this, this is all free. So I got the schnitzel, chicken schnitzel with like the side of red cabbage and um, the spetzel or whatever it is, the little noodle stuff. It didn't look all that appealing, but man, was that tasty. That was really, really nice. The chicken cutlet was really just, basically just like a fried chicken cutlet. The cabbage was like, actually, oddly enough, the best part, it was, it was very sweet. It was almost like sugary, um, like almost like a dessert. Uh, and then the spatzel was just, it tasted more like a noodle as opposed to what a spatzel usually is. I've been saying spatzel, but it's spatzel. Um, 
It was good. It was actually really good. I, I would kind of expect that in here. But I decided, because the woman was like, do you want anything else? You know, it's all free. And I was like, tempted, right? So I, I looked at their burger. I was like, I almost did their burger. I'm like, no, I'm fat. I don't need to do that. But I am fat, so I'm going to get a dessert. <laughs> We're getting bourbon, maple, something or other. Uh, the food is great. I'm really upset that I have to go fly now. <laughs> Let me grab a coffee real quick, give you guys another quick look around. We got some teas and things like that. The espresso bar, this is what we're going to be hitting up here real quick before we have to bounce. This is the first time in my life where I've like actually actively been upset that my flight is on time because <laughs> I would love to just hang out in here all day. So if I was going to stay here longer, I could just sit. It's just, you know, charge my phone and all that stuff. I really like this. This is really cool. So here we have an open bar. You can order whatever you want. And apparently it's all covered for free, which is cool. Uh, there's also a buffet. I had not noticed this. Look at this. Just a quick glance. Pastas. And these potatoes. That's <laughs> so awesome. That's amazing. And there's, wow, there's even more over there I didn't notice. Cold cuts, you can make your own sandwiches. There's pre made ones, cookies, fruit, soda. Man, it really puts, I love the United Club, but man, does it put it to shame a little bit. Uh, and then, here's the cool thing. So, if you want to use the bathroom, they have a whole section of bathrooms. <laughs> Looks like Christmas lights, right? Red lights, that unit is taken. Green light, you can just go in. And this is your bathroom. <laughs> it's got special hand wash stuff, just your own private unit. <laughs> they have this like fancy tea selection, and I think this sums it all up. Damn, man, look at all that tea. <laughs> you are in the Polaris Lounge. So I'm in an awkward spot right now. My flight is supposed to be boarding, but it's not, which is awesome because it means I get to stay here longer. I'm trying to find a way for my flight to be delayed without me going to prison which mostly just involves me wishing really hard. <laughs> and so far, we've been delayed at least like 10 minutes. Yeah, not really delayed, boarding just hasn't started, but the second it says I got a board, I'm gonna bolt. I don't wanna go, man, I don't wanna go. It worked. My flight was delayed 10 minutes. It's just 10 more minutes of enjoying myself <laughs> in the most pompous way possible. <laughs> But hey, I feel like I did that. So, the small delay affords me the opportunity to try some of these items, since I realistically will never get to come back in here for the rest of my life. I don't remember what they are, but chicken, pasta, and some sort of thing. You know something's quality when I have a caprese salad, but check this out. Pecan pie triple, oatmeal apple crisp. Look at this, guys. I know I'm fat, but I'm gonna grab one of each. I don't even care. Food little samples were good. Dessert was incredible. And now the depressing part, I have to leave and get on my flight. I really don't want to leave this place, it's amazing. <laughs> um, thank you to Joel for giving me access to this place, unbelievable. Okay, I'm officially in Houston, uh, where I will be spending the night here, so I've got a hotel all lined up and all that stuff, so I'll go deal with that. There's a possibility we might be able to go into the other Polaris Lounge, though likely not until tomorrow. But anyway, we'll go see what's going to happen now. It worked. They let me in, so I'm, back. I'm in the United Polaris Lounge in Houston now, so never did any of these before, and now I've done two in the same day. Uh, so I'm not super hungry, but I'm just going to kind of chill out. The the, the, the woman running the counter was very cool about it because I basically explained, like, my bag isn't going through automatically. It's just going to sit at baggage claim. Like, what can I do? And she was like, honestly, just let it sit there. Eventually, our guys will just take it. You just go down and get it whenever you want. Enjoy your time here. So, I shall. So, this seems to be a standard thing that they all have shower suites. Uh, all the Polaris lounges. The club lounges don't usually have that, except for the big one in Newark. Maybe there's a big one in Denver coming soon. Maybe restrooms, customer service. This one also has a dining section, much like you can just order food. And then there's also, I think there's a buffet. There's like a buffet. Yeah, there's a buffet there. And then there's like ordering food section too. So, yeah. Yeah, here's the order food section. And the buffet's on that side. Although I'm not really that hungry at the moment, but uh, I got time. That's a nice view of Houston. 
Yeah, so we got the open bar thing, and then let's head down there and take a look at this buffet real quick and see what kind of options we got. Uh, got the hot foods in the middle, desserts and things over there. Um, we've got sandwiches and pre-made things and all that kind of stuff over here. Cajun spice red fish. Got Texas sweet potato something. Uh, black bean chorizo, chicken and soup, gumbo. Man, lots of good stuff. It's just a fancy area and you can look out over uh, at other people. There is a club lounge. I've been in the normal club lounge. It's usually like a floor down. Yeah, like over there. I've been in there. I can get in there anytime. This is the special one. So I am seated. Uh, they're gonna bring me the menu. I already know what I'm gonna get because I didn't get the Polaris burger. Yeah, that's the one. That one seems to be standard at the various lounges. And then the other ones, they just have like different things that are slightly changed up. But this one, at least based on my limited experience, seems to be consistent. So I'm gonna do that because that's what they claim they do well. Yeah, we went ahead and got the bananas foster. So it's like a uh, bread pudding with vanilla ice cream and caramel sauce and just oh, so much good stuff. We've pretty much done everything we can do. Unfortunately, I think it's that time I actually got to leave now, so... But I'll be back, because tomorrow morning I get to come in here right before the flight. See, normally this is where I would go. United Club. But today, thanks to Joel, it's special. As we stand here at uh, Houston, which is of course a big United hub, it's interesting. You can, it's, I, I don't really spend that much time in this airport. <laughs> and it's actually funny, I've spent almost no time in the city of Houston. Uh, most of the time I've ever been here, it is this airport. One day, guys, we're gonna have to come down here and like actually do something in Houston. What do you think? You want me to do that? I think we should do that. Ah, uh, memories. I once went to Cuba from here. I'm glad that they've resumed those routes. And uh, maybe one day, maybe one day we'll do an episode down there. Would you guys like to see that? Good morning. It is day two uh, now here in Houston, Texas. Okay, yeah, we're just in an airport hotel, uh, but that's all good. Uh, so the plan now, get back over to IAH uh, and, you know, check in the bag and get on our way to Tokyo. But um, I'm not going to lie, I got up intentionally early because it means I can go hang out in the Polaris Lounge again. So we are now at IAH, George Bush International. Not George W. Bush, but uh, the other one, five points of light, that Bush. Anyway, so we're at his airport. Uh, I've just checked in my bag over here, uh, and now I have to go through the clear lane, which happens to be right there. And uh, Polaris Lounge, through security, no problems at all. Uh, now we're gonna head over to Terminal E for two purposes. One, as I said, the Polaris Lounge is there, but it just happens that my gate is like next door over, so oh, let's go eat. Five points of light. Dana Carvey used to impersonate me. George H.W. Bush, Bush 41, sometimes he's referred to. He actually has, his presidential library is sorta here. It's like an hour and a half drive away. One day maybe we'll do that when we do like a proper Houston video. I, I like presidential libraries. Uh, but yeah, not to be confused with his son. George W. Bush is from Texas, in which we're in Texas, but that's not the same Bushy. It's a little pro tip, if you're flying United at uh, Houston, most gates are either the C gates or the E gates. Uh, if you ever check in, you're always going to check in at the C gates, uh, and then you can get over to the E gates a number of ways. I think there's a little shuttle service, there's a train service, and then there's also walking, which is what I'm doing because I'm not in a rush. But be aware, IAH is a huge airport. It's kind of confusing as a layout, so build time in for that. And there we go. Let's go. Let's go inside and enjoy this for what potentially is the last time ever in my entire life. <laughs> so I've sat down for the breakfast and I'm torn. Do I get the chorizo quiche or do I get the IH breakfast sandwich? I know. First world problems, I'm aware. <laughs> The double espresso has arrived, oh yes. Uh, which is good because I had no coffee this morning. <laughs> so the breakfast sandwich is here, it is small, so I can see why she said get both. <laughs> it also comes with a strawberry though, so you know, there's that. But uh, infinite free food. So a little time has passed and I've decided I wanna eat a little bit more, so I'm hitting up the buffet and I'll show you guys some options here. Uh, just just tons and tons of stuff. You can read some of the names. We've got some French toast, we've got eggs, we've got, you know, um, we've got potatoes, we've got various meats like bacon, sausage, uh, all that stuff. Um, we've got biscuits and gravy even. Uh, there's also sections with just like cold cuts and random like things you, you use to compile and add, you know, additional stuff. Uh, and then we've even got things like scones and cookies. And yeah. Anyway, so I ended up getting um, 
some potatoes, some bacon, and uh, French toast. I've sufficiently made a pig of myself over at the buffet, but man, that was really good. The, the French toast was... I don't know what that really was. <clears throat> I mean, there's a description of it. All I'm saying is I know I could never make that. That was really fantastic. Obviously, bacon was good. Bacon's always good. Everything was good. Scone was nice. Everything was nice. I'm going to miss this. <laughs> Sadly, my flight is on time, which means I must go now. <laughs> oh. My time in the light is over. The darkness now must be cast as I must fly first class to, <laughs> to Tokyo. I know I sound like a complete jerk, but seriously, this place is awesome, guys. If you ever get the chance, like, oh, this is so cool. Thank you, Joel. Seriously, this is awesome. It doesn't feel the same anymore. You know, life's just different now. But uh, it's all right. <laughs> I know, I sound like a jerk. I'm sorry, everybody. But uh, yeah, no, check this out. The smokehouse. It smells really good. Um, but remember, if you're ever in Texas, the barbecue part of the state is Austin, not Houston. Uh, but anyway, just a little tip on Texas. You get uh, Mexican food in San Antonio. You get steak in Dallas. And you get barbecue in Austin. Honestly, I don't think Houston is actually known for anything specifically Every time I talk to somebody from Texas, I'm like, what's the big food in Houston? They're like, oh, you know, <laughs> there's never really like a great answer. But if somebody has one, I'd love to know it. Reminder that as of now, you still need to fill out this whole like QR code thing to go to Japan. So here it is, you go there, fill all that out and your entry into Japan will be a lot easier. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Hi, how are you? Welcome aboard. Thank you. This is my base camp, everybody. Look at that. Huge shout out to Joel. He's got magical powers, apparently. So let's take a look at things. We've got a couple of pillows. This is like a foam one, and it says Polaris on it. Uh, we also have a nicer, like, Saks Fifth Avenue pillow. And a couple of blankets here, as well as some slippers, but I don't think I'm going to be using those. Um, and there's also this blanket as well, also Saks Fifth Avenue. Over here we have our outlets, they're kind of custom headphones, a little bottle of water waiting for me, all sorts of just stuff. Um, and then we have a menu we'll take a look at here. This is the food options. Uh, I don't know, I'll have to study this, but... I think I'll get the entree of the seared beef short rib. That seems logical. And ooh, the ice cream sundae, I forgot about that. At one point they bring out like this whole, like, I've done this before, <laughs> they bring out like an ice cream sundae thing. It's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, just very neat. Now they also give you this little pouch thing. Uh, this has like toiletries basically. So this is actually cool to keep uh, for travel purposes because it's got things like little toothbrushes and you know stuff like that that's all in there for you. Uh, I also brought this, which is my like uh, little portable charger thing. This has two power outlets uh, that are grounded for American style plus Japanese style. Uh, one USB-A port and three USB-C ports. So you take this and I plug it into the outlet over there. And then I can use this to conveniently charge my phone, the iPod, headphones, whatever I need. I recommend bringing a, an extension cord type of thing like this when possible on flights. It just makes your life easier. Just thought I'd talk a little bit more about the menu here. You get to pick one from the entrees. I'm going with the seared beef rib, but you kind of get all this in uh, in a sequence. You're basically flying in a hotel restaurant at the moment. It's pretty cool. You can, if you wish, do express dining, where they just kind of do everything quicker as opposed to taking their time with it, but I'm not in a rush. The flight's 13 hours, and I intend to enjoy it. We also have, because I didn't show it here, there's this table that extends out, and uh, this whole pod that I'm in actually reclines automatically into a bed. So, you know, I have flown uh, United's Polaris class a few times. It's, it's very nice, as you can tell. Um, it's funny, I have... So there was a brief time uh, for a few years where United was doing different tiers. So, like, right now what they have is Economy in the back, Economy Plus, then there's these purple seats called Premium, then there's these, which are called Polaris Business Class, which you'll notice there's nothing called First Class, specifically. Um, a few years ago, in, like, 2017, I think it was, 2018, maybe, um, I actually got a flight from Munich, Germany, to Chicago, and they still had the First Class at the time, which is above what you're seeing here like this is this is business class the first class was like this entire space six seats. 
and they only had six seats. Like, that was all that was constructed for all the space here. Uh, and each seat was insane. It was like, you know, they roped it off with, like, sheets and stuff. It was like a mini little apartment type of deal. Um, they would even tuck you in. Please fasten your seatbelt. Oh, I already no. did that part. But, um, yeah, it was crazy. I don't know how I got that, because I didn't buy that. I was just, oh, you've been upgraded. And I was like, I missed that. I'm glad I got through that one time. Just finished eating. As you can see, I had a uh, nice salad. It was a caprese salad, actually, interestingly. Uh, I also had the, the, the short rib, which was fantastic. The meat was great. Mashed potatoes, as well as carrots and other vegetation in there. And uh, some pretzel bread. Very, very good. Now we sit and we wait for the ice cream. Oh yeah, it's ice cream time. We've got fudge, we've got Oreos, we've got vanilla base. So I'm in the bathroom and uh, we've got face mister. This stuff is nice and refreshing. We've got uh, hand cream and we've got garment stuff so I can make my fabrics smell nice. My <laughs> fancy hoodie. I can't do this with one hand. Oh, the cap's still on. That would be a my bad moment. Let's try that again, shall we? Ah, it's so refreshed. Okay, so we've arrived at uh, Narita, Japan, which I've talked to you guys about before in a different episode. I'm extremely tired at the moment. First, let's go over the breakfast. The breakfast was nice. <laughs> it was French toast thing. It was good. Uh, secondly, uh, Japan is still taking the mask thing pretty seriously. It's not a rule necessarily, but it's very much encouraged. So. so they've slightly updated things. They allow all the foreign transaction cards, like the things you have to fill out on the plane. You can all do it digitally now, as well as the QR code thing for the health check. I have done all that. Just behind me is the transfers area. If you're transferring here, you don't have to do any of this. You just go from one spot to the other. But technically I'm arriving because I'm staying here for one night. Um, and then we're heading down to Saipan. If I didn't even mention that before, I honestly don't even remember at this point. But uh, that means I go through customs. I'm grinning, but you can't tell. Of course it greets you as Japan would with Nintendo characters. I'm, I'm very happy to see that they have not updated that. <laughs> That's very neat. They've changed this place up a little bit. This is a nice welcome to Japan sign, but we're not allowed to take photos anymore. Man, I know that Narita is the complicated location, but it is the far superior airport. Wow, I just, it's so much more efficient. <laughs> so I just completed the first part where they like stamp your passport and all that stuff. I want to clarify something here. So the last time I was here and I talked to you about this, you had to, they were just changing up the system. They had this QR code thing called uh, My SOS, and then they also had you like fill out paperwork. That has changed a bit. You don't have to do that anymore. There's an entirely digital version. Um, I'll put a link in the description to this so that you guys can look this up, but you basically just fill it out and then it'll, it basically does all three of those things digitally. Uh, and it's all boiled down to a single QR code. So when you get here, your life's a lot easier. Um, so now we've passed the first part with the passport and now I gotta go pick up my bag and then do that second part where they ask me some more questions and probably scan the QR code again, we'll see. Uh, and then we have a lot of time to kill. I'll just help you guys out. What this says is caution, don't be cool. See how cool that guy is? You can't be that cool. This is a safety issue. You guys are not allowed to play hide and seek here. Right here, this is a warning that if you came in on United, you gotta pick up your bags because they're not gonna check them through to anything, uh, which is sort of what I'm doing. I would be transiting to Saipan, um, which is an American territory, and we'll talk about more later. But uh, for now, we have to find my flight, which was neither Guam nor Newark. Like I said, this is it's a little weird that United owns Guam basically as a hub, but that's not ours. So we gotta go find mine from IAH. Also, I should probably show you guys this. When you land, if you've done the health code thing, they'll check it and then they'll hand you this piece of paper. This piece of paper is essentially proof that somebody looked at your thing and said, you're good to go, uh, COVID-wise. Okay, so my bag was over there, got it here, and now we go through this part. Man, they have really modernized that. Um, highly recommend doing all the QR code stuff. Basically, when you go through the process, um, you just, they have three different codes. One's your health code, 
One's your like disembarkment code and the other is like your customs declaration code. So they all get like presented at a single website once you've filled everything out. And the key is just to know which order to put them in. But if you don't know, there'll be people to help you with that. They basically just scan it and then they double check everything and then you're just good to go through each phase. Um, so the last one here, you, it's actually manual. You just do it yourself. Uh, so you just scan your passport, scan the QR code, doors open. Hello, welcome to Japan. So yeah, here we are. And that's gonna do it for part one of a 12 part series. Yeah, this one goes on for a minute. Uh, the next one will be entirely at Tokyo Narita Airport. I'm gonna show you everything about that as I ended up spending over a day there. Uh, then of course our adventures will continue. But in the meantime, if you guys could do me a favor, please like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that already, as well as hit me up on all the social media stuff in the description, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all later.